So I'm ready to begin my Tansu project. And um, some of you may remember uh, an episode of Tales from the Horde that I debuted this piece of Paloina or Japanese Kiri wood, and that's what I'll be using for, for this project. First thing in dealing with this uh, Tansu project, I, I went ahead and picked out the hardware that I was going to be using because I wanted to order it, I wanted to get it in my hands, kind of examine the sizes and, and build my design around that hardware. Um, Tansu obviously is, is very hardware focused and you'll see a lot of uh, examples of, of smaller chests or sea chests, which is what I'll be modeling this after, where it's mostly hardware. It was built to, to take quite a beating. Also a lot of times it was used as, as the safe for the ship. but I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to be able to highlight some of the wood and the grain as well. So I didn't want to necessarily build it to scale so that there, you saw nothing but the hardware. I wanted it, you know, wide enough, broad enough so that you saw some of the wood through the hardwood, and other, um, through the hardware, in other words. So one of the things I did, um, especially on a small project like this, is I will draw a, a full-size perspective drawing of it, and I'll lay the hardware on it. And, and that's really what I did here on this piece of hardboard. And you uh, may or may not be able to see what I did here, but essentially I drew out the face here, and I was able to lie, lay the hardware down on top of it. And I'll, I'll bring the camera a little bit closer and lay the hardware in, and you'll see what I was shooting for. Um, as you'll see in a minute, um, I went ahead and cut this big post this big post of uh, Kiri um, cut a section off the end right here in order to make this box. And that's what I've got set up right here. And it's actually been resawn into a bunch of different parts now. And um, just as, a, as a, a tip when you're resawing, I'll always mark cabinet maker's triangle on the side and on the end so that I can keep them in order going forward. Um, I've already recognized that that was a bit of a mistake in how I did it. I guess I haven't learned anything by watching T. Chisel's podcast about grain, but the box itself, uh, if the box were facing you and the drawers were pull out, I want um, the grain to flow all the way around the box. So what I should have done is taken this long plank here and just re-sawn the whole thing along its length. Um, instead, I was thinking big, heavy post. It's going to be hard to resaw this big, heavy block. But frankly, with Paloina being so light, it wouldn't have been that difficult. So instead, I hacked off a 12-inch block off the end because um, my, my longest dimension is 10 inches. Um, however, I should be okay because of the fact that I resawed it the way I did. I'm getting a lot of book matching grain pair um, grain pairing, so I'll be able to get a constant grain all the way around. Where I'm going to get a slight interruption of the grain is actually on the bottom. But interestingly enough, you're not really going to see the bottom very much. So, uh, if I were to do this again, and I'm sure I will make another tansu again, uh, I would actually take the full plank resaw one board out of that and then build the box that way. Also, it's just a good idea to try to keep the length of your stock. If you know you're going to have the stock left over, you obviously want longer stock. It's not going to do you any good to have a bunch of 8-inch thick stock left, um, whereas if you've got you know slightly thinner but longer, it's going to be a lot better in the long run. So, eh, I screwed up, but what are you going to do? Let's see what we can uh, make the best of our grain matching just with the block we have. So, let me get this beast out of the way here. Here's a better shot of that full-size drawing I did on the hardboard, and I've gone ahead and laid out the hardware where I want to see it. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of hardware that goes on the face of this. These are the two drawers that come out of the front of the box and I've got corner protectors on as well as the pulls and if I made it any narrower I think I would have really crowded the hardware in here um, so I did want to show some of the grain especially because the piece I got picked out for the grain these drawers will be made out of one piece and the grain will flow across the drawers so if I made the drawers too much smaller you know I you wouldn't be able to see much of the grain uh, the other thing is when I originally drew this to take these corner brackets off here uh, this is actually drawn with three quarters of an inch thick around the outer piece because again I'm modeling this after a, um, uh, a ship safe so you want it to be thick and beefy but and, and I started to like it but 
But what I'm not real happy with, I do like the space between these corner pieces and the edge of the drawer. I do like having a little bit of space there. But what I'm not real happy about is these center pieces that protect this joint here with the divider. Um, I could, I, I, I don't like this much space in between because there's differing thickness of this hardware. So what I was thinking about doing um, is setting these down a little bit closer, but then you've got a gap along the top and that really defeats the purpose. This hardware is meant to protect the edges here. So what I'm gonna do um, is actually, instead of making these outer carcass pieces three quarters of an inch, I am reducing them to a half an inch thick, which actually is more in proportion for the size of the box that I'm making. So what that does, I'm keeping the same outer dimension. What that does is allows me to make the drawers just a little bit taller and a little bit wider which again will allow more space around the drawers, but it will also essentially cover up some of the space in between the hardware to give it a little bit beefier look, and, and I like that, that closer, uh, closer looking feel to it. So again, drawing a full size drawing allows you to kind of sort these things out and, and see what you like, what you don't like. From there, um, uh, just on my, my sketch pad here where I started some of the ideas, I go ahead and make up a cut list from there. So really we are ready to get in and start cutting some of the pieces. So I'll show you what we do about some of the grain matching as well. Just to reiterate, all of these 12 inch wide planks essentially came out of one 12 inch wide by uh, about six inch thick post. And, and as I said earlier, it would have been smarter to go ahead and cut the entire length and grain match that way. But interestingly enough, since they all came out of the same plank, I can just use the book match to create grain matching along the sides here. So what I've got marked, this is my top piece. Um, I like the, the flow and the cathedral pattern on the top here, but the book match actually works nicely as this moves into the side. And what I'm gonna do is cut this board actually is big enough that I can cut two sides out of it if I cut it right here down the middle. And the other great thing is, again, since it's a book match, if I make this these two join together, and then you'll see I've got you know two and a two marked here to match up those corners, then over here I've got a, a one marked, which corresponds with the other side of the top. Because since it's a book match, I get a book match in that direction as well. So essentially, I'll be getting, if I were to take this board and kind of put it like that, I'll get a book match along the left side of the top and the right side of the top. When I bring the bottom into play, I don't get the book match there. And again, that's the issue of, of, of not cutting out a one long plank. But, you know, that's going to be down. All you're going to see, really, are the three sides and then the front and we will get a continuous book match along the top and the edge of the two sides and the top. And then the drawer fronts will be cut out of one solid board. I particularly like this kind of rising continuous grain pattern across the front. So cutting this in half will give me the, the drawer fronts and this is just gonna be the back of the case itself. So just pay attention to those things. It's gonna make a, a much more beautiful flow to the overall piece in the end. Again. Tansu is about the hardware, but I, I don't want to hide the wood at the same time. And even though there'll be joints and things in between these transitions, to be able to watch that grain flow all the way through, it's just going to make for a much better and more thought out piece in the long run. All the parts for the box are now milled and cut to the final dimensions. It's time to lay out the joinery. And traditionally, Tansu joinery was meant to be purely functional. It wasn't meant to be decorative, and uh, any uh, it, and really the hardware is what was used to reinforce those joints and add kind of the decorative element to it. But more often than not, these chests, as I said, were in, designed to serve a purpose, whether it was for a merchant to carry his wares or a ship's captain to uh, store the payroll and navigational charts and things like that. So the joinery is often um, very subdued. One of the uh, most typical joints used on a box like this is what we would call a box joint. Uh, I believe the Japanese term is a samai gumi sugi. And again, my Japanese is pretty bad, so ignore my pronunciations if need be. But it was a pegged box joint. And actually, if you look at the green and green style in the arts and crafts movement, you'll see a lot of the same 
um, same style of joints. And, and we know that the Brothers Green were heavily influenced by Asian architecture and Asian design. And that's what we're going to do here. The major difference from a green and green joint to this joint is the green and green brothers often accentuated their box joints by rounding over the edges and adding a lot of shadow lines and using ebony for the plugs. This is going to be a, a standard flush box joint and the plugs will be used um, in the same species of wood in order to blend in. And again, the hardware that goes over these joints to protect them will be the ornamentation, so to speak. So I've gone ahead and laid out, and I've just got the box kind of set up and what will be its, its final construction. One thing to note is the center divider. Uh, make sure that when you cut it to size, you orient the grain in the same vertical pattern. Uh, if you turn it on the edge, then we'll be looking at ingrain on the front of the box and it would just be this kind of glaring difference from the rest of the box. So the sides and the grain wraps all the way around the box like this. So the internal piece is the grain is running vertically as well. So what I'll be doing is a, a three box, three tongue box joint, if you will. And you can see I've already gone with a marking knife and laid out the, um, the recess, if you will, on the top. I'll go ahead and cut this on the top and the bottom before I go about working on the sides. And I'll use what I've already cut out on the side on the top and the bottom to lay out the joint for the sides. From there, it's going to be a couple of shallow data cuts in the center to hold the center divider in, and then I'll cut uh, a shallow rabbit on the back to hold the back panel, and that'll be it for the construction of this box. And then, of course, we'll make the pegs and peg all the joints. So let's head over to the table saw and start cutting this joinery. So we've got the top and the bottom notched, and um, what I've done here is just using one of the other sides to brace this, I've gone ahead and lined up the board where it will originally eventually fit, and just using a marking knife, I'm gonna get in here and mark those shoulders across the end grain. And now I can transfer my lines down the side and I'll probably use a, you know, choose one of these saddle squares. These things are awesome by the way. And holding my knife in that line that I just struck. And then run it down the side. And actually, when you're marking long grain like this, it's easier to use a scratch all. Marking knives are great for cross grain situations. Scratch all does a great job along the grain. And I've got my lines marked out there. <clears throat> the good news is, as long as you keep your table saw blade height at the same height, you've already got that set up properly, 
for the same height that you cut these notches. So just leave that alone, don't mess with it. Now we just gotta take these back over the table saw using that same setup we did before. Line it up on these two lines, uh, put a stop back in place for repeatability, and I can do all four edges of the sideboards. do a test cut and just a, a piece of uh, curia floating around just mainly to test the, the depth and also the fit because I did plane these just a little bit under a half of an inch so I'm using shims and everything to get the data just right and um, just in case you hadn't heard it's always good to make a test cut and here's a perfect reason why this uh, sort of doesn't fit at all and it occurs to me that because these pieces are a little under half an inch thick I designed it for the center divider to be 3 eighths of an inch thick. So I set the dado up for 15, 30 seconds inch cut and it really needed to be 3 eighths of an inch. So I just uh, dodged a bullet that time. Take the dado blade out, reset it for 3 eighths, and then we'll cut the center.
all by myself There is no one here You give your hand to me And then you say hello And I can hardly speak My heart is beating so You think you know me well Well, you don't know me No, you don't know a one Who dreams of you at night And longs to kiss you I, um, since the last segment, have actually uh, cut and milled all the parts for the drawers in the Tansu cabinet. And um, let me grab that. Here's our cabinet. Um, I obviously need to uh, do some finishing, um, just some scraping and cleaning up, a little bit of planing here and there. But I went ahead and um, did all of the, uh, the milling of the parts and such for the drawers. Uh, if you remember correctly, I'm using um, Kiri for the drawer fronts, and I'm actually using Cypress for the drawer sides. And um, went ahead and milled it all and ran grooves for the bottom panel and a groove also for a sliding lid. Um, if you remember, this uh, cabinet is being commissioned to actually be used as a type of urn for, for ashes, so I wanted there to be a lid to slide on. Um, you know, certainly for keeping the ashes in there, I imagine they'll probably be putting something else, but also more of a symbol as well to kind of close off that box and you can't just open it up. There will not be a lock on the drawers here, so I want a little bit of um, closure, if you will, in there. Um, <clears throat> so rather than, you know, walking through just the standard of milling lumber and cutting it to size, um, the joinery is just simple rabbit joints on the side that are milled to be the diameter of the sides. Uh, I will reinforce those joints using pegs along the side. Uh, a lot of traditional tansu will use finger joints on the drawers. I chose not to go that direction because I, uh, with the hardware I'm putting on the drawer fronts, I think it almost would be too busy and a little too distracting to have ingrain. Certainly if I had chosen to go that route, I would have continued to use um, Kiri for the sides rather than alternating species. This way, it does allow me to use Cypress, which I really like the look and the color of it. I think it'll be a nice contrast when the drawers are pulled out to have um, pegs, and I'll probably use Kiri, or I might even use a darker wood like Walnut for the pegs, just to, to highlight it a little bit. It doesn't you know, quite go with the traditional Tansu aesthetic, but you know, this is not a traditional Tansu piece either. But one of the things I wanted to talk to you about in my last podcast, I talked about uh, doing multiple projects at once and planning everything between multiple projects at the same time and jointing everything at the same time. And, and I did that with this Tansu project with several others. One of the drawbacks to that is when you've gone ahead and planed the, um, the bottom panels, um, these are all quarter of an inch thick, I planed everything else that I needed with my five other projects uh, quarter inch thick. And when you finally get back to it and you realize, you know what, that's not quite the right thickness. I have found that um, the settings on my lunchbox planer, when you set the stop at a quarter of an inch, it, uh, it comes in maybe just over a quarter of an inch, or perhaps my dado stack is just a little under a quarter of an inch, or possibly they're both dead on at a quarter of an inch. So when I try to fit this bottom panel into the groove, which are both a quarter of an inch, it doesn't quite fit. And I've had this happen many, many times before, and um, you know I could go back to the planer and certainly take a 64th or 32nd of an inch off and it would fit nicely. But obviously once I've got it cut down to this size, I can't run this through the planer. Talk about unsafe. I could certainly hit it with a hand plane to take it down in thickness. But ultimately, if you look at a lot of traditional drawers, you'll see that the bottoms are made of thicker stock and they just have tapered edges. And I really like the look of that. And so that's what I'm going to do here. So let's put the dog into the bench here. <clears throat> this is this is the bottom panel for this drawer and 
obviously anytime you're planing, I'm going to plane a, a small chamfer onto these. Anytime you're doing that, you want to plane along the grain first, create a small chamfer there so that when you go back and plane across the grain, you're not going to get tear on that. End. So really, it's just a couple of quick swipes with the block plane. And then tilting my angle back here a little bit more, I want to get a little bit more pronounced bevel. And just that quickly, I've got a good fit. I don't want it too tight here, because remember, this is the bottom panel. Um, it does need to have a little bit of room for movement. Which, speaking of which, you'll notice the grain orientation of this panel. When I take the drawer front and slide it in, the grain orientation is running this way. So that any expansion we see in the drawer will be along the length of the drawer where there's room, rather than expanding out this way and blowing out the sides of the drawer. Because once it fits into place here, it's going to be a very snug fit, and I don't want that panel to, to cause the drawer to stick. So now that I've planed along the grain, I'll come back here and hit the cross grain situation. And the nice thing here is I can see my chamfer line, and essentially I keep hitting that chamfer until I see the, the line between those meet at the point. In other words, a perfect mitered chamfer. Um, and then I know that I've got the same depth and angle on that chamfer, and I can stop there. So let's go ahead and hit the other long grain side. Until that chamfer meets at the cross grain side. And this should fit snugly on all of those grooves. So now um, I can put this piece together and I put the chamfered side on the bottom of the joint. Put the back in place. Fit is nice and snug, good all the way around. And it's square as well. So this is ready to go into the clamps and uh, get it all glued up. <clears throat> so just like some uh, cooking show on television, you get that magical moment where, ta-da, it's come out of the clamps and it's perfectly glued up. Here's the other drawer I did this a little bit earlier. Now, you'll see that I cut the back of the drawer to be a little bit shorter. In fact, it's exactly as tall as the bottom of the top group. And I need to take another panel, slightly different um, dimensions to it, and I went ahead and chamfered the edges and the front of it, but I left the back um, at full width. And this is designed to snugly smooth slide into this top panel. Now I'm not going to push it all the way in because I haven't uh, carved in the thumb hole to pull it back out yet and it's particularly difficult because the fit is just right. But again, you'll notice the grain orientation here. The grain is running this way so that as this wood expands across the grain, it's got room to expand out the back like this. If I switched it and put it this way, as that expanded, um, A, Best case scenario, it just won't open anymore and it'll be stuck in place. Worst case scenario is it'll pop these edges right out um, and, and break the box. And if this box were inside the cabinet, it, well, I need to fit these drawers. There we go. This slides in. If this were inside the cabinet like this, it might even break the cabinet as well. So same rule applies to the bottom grain direction, running crossways and the top green direction. So now I'll uh, get out my carving chisels and carve a little uh, thumb pull in here in the top. <laughs> 